McKenzie, space again, gets the pass away for Lambert Welcome along to the All Blacks podcast. Uh, first one on the road for us. We're at sunny Mount Monganui. You can't see it because it's a podcast, but it's a gorgeous day here, as it always is. Uh, we are in the club rooms of Mount Monganui uh, Rugby Club, Sports Club. And the reason why we're here is because we're catching up with one of the legends that is, uh, well, one of the cornerstones and has propped up the bar on multiple occasions, Mike Delaney. How are you, buddy? Good, thanks. Thanks for having me. Mate, it's an absolute pleasure. As always, joined by Roundy. How are you, mate? Good mate, good to get on the road. I think uh, I think this environment suits us maybe more than the Polish studio. I think we'll flourish in here. <laughs> <laughs> it is conducive to great chat, which we've had a few already. Unfortunately, they'll have to make uh, they'll have to make the editors cut because uh, probably not safe for podcast. But climbing straight into it, uh, Mali, what have you been up to? What are you doing? Um, oh, hiding in the office at the yeah. moment. Yeah, hiding and, and snuck away. But um, no, just getting into the coaching stuff again. It's good to have some footy going. Um, Obviously, with, with COVID, we missed out on a bit of that. We had the a China Lions team that we were running um, that yep. was run through Bay of Plenty, um, Rugby Union, and that sort of tipped over. And um, and obviously, the New Zealand 20 stuff's fallen over. So just it's awesome to get some uh, product out there with, with Ida, you know, Mighty 10 Cup. Mate, what about, though, your role with 20s? I know um, for this year that's been, p- been put on hold, but what was your role with New Zealand 20s? Um, Ironically enough, I was the, the defence coach. Okay, sure. You're <laughs> brave. You're brave. That very funny. <laughs> Not known for your tackling. <laughs> <laughs> well, I knew the system. Yeah, yeah. I didn't know what I was doing. <laughs> Mate, yeah, but what's, um, even though the schedule's done for this year, like due to COVID, there's no games on, but maybe talk us a little bit about that, like trying to whip together sort of the top players from New Zealand and the other 20 actually sounds like it'd be pretty tough gig you know there's a lot of talent out there what's the process for rounding up those troops and, and finally getting to you for a bit of coaching yeah well, I think um, you know the head coach <coughs> um, Craig Philpott would oh, yeah. he was pretty you know he had his head all around that with understanding the secondary school system and who was coming through there New Zealand secondary schools and then working to I don't know within the Chiefs regions and Blues and just go around there and try and get the testing done and um, but yeah mammoth job to try yeah. and capture the the right guys for that job so you know, obviously a field fall through the cracks, but you know it's a pretty tough job. Yeah, how do you go about sort of managing? Because obviously that would be that would be the thickest ground mm-hmm. for talent, and that would be the pinnacle of it. Basically, that'd be the biggest numbers that you could deal with, and then it probably drops away as you get into club and you get a little bit older. How do you sift through all those people? How do you do? You just have to chase them up through the systems. Is it back down to Goldfields or Ty Mitchell, or do you, do you put numbers on them? Talent ID. Yeah. It's tough, it's even tough, you know, in our space in my 10 Cup trying to get guys through from academies and, you know, you know are they good, you know? Are they, and, and obviously guys grow at different times and some understand the game better later on, so how you can try and get that, get those guys to continue through, you know, if they miss the boat, does that mean it's finished? Or So I suppose that's the battle is just, <clears throat> I don't know, I suppose it's just here and now and who's good and who's good to go. Um, and that's probably determined through their provincial unions and stuff with how they deal with them going through academies and schools. Any, um, even though the under-20s is not going to happen this year, um, is there anyone floating around in the Super Rugby comp at the moment who's in that catchment, who've been keeping an eye on, and, and maybe when it kicks in back in next year, we'll be able to keep see how they're going? Um, <coughs> yes, I see Tupo Vai has been playing for the Chiefs. They've been real light in locks, and I know I think Josh Lord, a young fella that was coming through, has been involved, and I think they're pretty keen to get him out there, but he's... 18 or something, I don't know, <laughs> yeah. but he's a bit of a freak. Um, Rivers Rayhan has been over the hill. Um, you know, there's some great guys coming through and it's unfortunate for them. You know, I think that would have been quite a good side. Um, hopefully they can try and get something together to try and, I don't know, capture that group. But um, yeah, it's, you know, it's a young man's game now. But So those guys are, you know, they surprised me with, with their, their knowledge of the game and physically, like, you're talking to these big units saying they're only... 2019 and that's probably the difference isn't it a lot of these kids now have got a training age of you know six seven mm-hmm. eight years whereas perhaps yourself mullies i'm not you know making any assumptions but perhaps you didn't look at the inside of a gym for a wee while but some of these fellas like you say they're young <laughs> in face. You say oh, uh, i was just trying not to be hung yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but um like you say the big units but they're they're uh, they're getting you know almost semi-professional training from a lot younger a lot younger age aren't yeah. they so they're hitting you hitting you ready to go yeah, well, I was in the uh, Waikato Rugby Academy when I left school and I think we did the beep test once every <laughs> six months and then see you later kind of thing, you know. It's just changed. It's a, 
I think maybe with the way that the schools are running pretty professionally and it's on TV and and that's probably the other challenge is making sure these guys don't think they're rock stars when they're not and then coming to other environments thinking that you know they're with the big boys now and they can't just try and run over everyone and getting their heads around that and, yep. and earning their stripes as well. When you go back to, if we take it back to your school days and uh, and growing up in the mighty Vegas, there were some pretty solid systems in place already back then, wasn't there? Because I mean that was your Super Eight school uh, and importing players left, right, and centre. <laughs> well, there's a few, <laughs> a few trips to the islands, and, um, <laughs> but yeah, that was um, yeah, being a small white boy and dealing with that, you sort of learn a few things. But um, yeah, I suppose it's been there, but just not to the extent now and. Um, yeah, it's different gravy now. It's pretty impressive the setups I've got. You've been in the you've been in the mixer for that long. Obviously, you're not looking as as long as you played. Uh, but do you, what are the biggest differences that you notice now on the coaching side of things as opposed to when you're coming through as a player? Um, it's just the detail. Like, there's so much detail that goes into a week and stats and analysis and GPS numbers and all that kind of stuff. It's just like even you know we just come from planning some of our sessions with the steamers this year and there's just so much detail that go into a working week and, and into a game into what the trainings look like and how everything flows and um, culture, everything, it's just massive. So, um, uh, yeah, it's just, just detail now because you can capture everything and you know, there's no hiding. <laughs> <laughs> no seagulling. No but, mate, what is it? So, um, with the other 20s um, not on, so for you... You're getting now building in for Mighty 10 Cup. So what's your role there at the Steamers? Yeah, so I've, um, <coughs> I have do the backs defence. Um, defence, eh? Hey? You've turned yeah. to a real defence specialist. I like it. Um, the other set piece, sort of scrum attack, uh, attack from lineouts, um, kicking strategy and, and just work with the inside. So it's a good sort of range of working from both sides of the ball, which is cool. But um, it's really helped doing the, the D side of things to, to help understanding how to attack better, which has been a you know, real big learning in that. Because... Um, you know, good coaches coach good teams, mate. And like the Bay are on the rise. Like you guys had a good season last year. Um, any fellas in particular that stood out for you? Because, you know, probably four or five years ago, the Bay were towards the bottom half of the second div and like won the comp last year and, and having a crack at the, the big boys this year. Like who was who was uh, real standouts for you boys last players. year? Yeah, um, players. Yeah, players. You know, I thought Chase, obviously, <coughs> winning, I think he has won the award for... Player of the year or something, but he was you know pretty influential. Uh, but just I think the key was just having really good good people and good guys that um, you know trained hard and, and and enjoyed themselves off the field and guys like Mitch Carpick who just you know just die for the jersey and not after accolades. Um, what a Aiden, motor! What a motor that man yeah, has. So he's awesome. And guys like Adam Ross who just go to work and we had a real good group. Yep. Um, a few guys came in and, and just really bought into what what Clayton McMillan does and around um, you know just driving having a good time really. It's, it must be a desirable union to be a part of. It's a great place to live. Yeah, we had that discussion because usually it's like, oh, we live at the beach and just go to the cafe and it gives us an <laughs> excuse to like... But we had the look now like, yeah, we live at the beach, it's awesome, embrace it, go do what you got to do. But when we're at training, you know, we get into it and, and have a good time doing it. So it was, um, yeah, it was a pleasure to be there for my first year to have a good year and um, a good, good group of boys. Mate, there's, um, as I just mentioned this year up into the top flight which is good times um, playing against some of the, the long-standing bigger traditional provinces but you're going to look at teams like Tasman for a bit of inspiration like the boys um, surely they're confident they can foot it up there because um, these days when you look around we're here at Blake Park where the Sevens and the Steamers and, and where there's the cricket over the road as well it's a great setup it's got to be a great place to um, you know put together a pro footy team. Yeah, it's awesome. Um, you know, and, uh, <coughs> the guys that come from out of the region are just like, you know, they just love it. Um, you know, temperature's pretty good, good cafes, but um, it's pretty hard keeping them in line and <laughs> keeping out of Astro and stuff. <laughs> <laughs> so I better go there and just make sure that they're <laughs> <laughs> Reg regulating the <laughs> regulating the situation. But any um, um, any new boys into the squad um, for this year, adding into to last year's 2019 team? Uh, we've got a pretty consistent squad from last year, which is good. A um, few have moved on, um, but there's a few new signings that have popped up, which I can't tell can't you. Can't say oh, too much, on, mate. This is what this is all about. Just yeah. give us a cut. Throw us a bone here, mate. Give us something. I'll get, I'll get in trouble. I'll get in trouble. But, but Rhymes you know, players are playing. <laughs> <laughs> Don't tempt me, mate. Um, yeah, if you... Good players, I suppose yeah. that'll um, you know be pretty, pretty important for our season, which is cool. But um, 
From in the region or out of the region? Originally from within the region. Oh, I know exactly like what you're talking oh, about. Oh, yeah, I see yeah, now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Got it. Got it. Easy. Shh. Easy. <laughs> <laughs> but, mate, we're. Um, Mighty 10 Cup is September the 11th, but um, you're enjoying Super Footy at the moment, having uh, being only Kiwi teams taking on each other each weekend. You're enjoying it? Yeah, it's been awesome. It's, it's good to have a Sunday Arvo, actually, where you can just park up yep. with a pack of chips and a fizzy, a brown, <laughs> brown fizzy, and yeah, then. Yeah. Um, yeah, it's it's been awesome. Um, must be tough on those guys backing up those big games. Uh, I don't know how you feel about it, but when you flick it over to the Aussie games, that it's just not that. It's, it's a bit it's more. Not, it's pointless. <laughs> yeah. Uh, if oh, no. you look over your shoulder up onto the board, there, you're an absolute pig of a human. You uh, <laughs> you feature in uh, not not one, not two, but three super franchises up there. Uh, stint for the Chiefs, the Landers. And uh, and and in the twilight years uh, with the Crusaders, uh, fond memories of uh, which clubs, which franchise? Um, oh, time at the Chiefs was awesome. Um, we had a real good group over there. Um, likes of Kahui and, and those boys have a good time. Um, we had a real good group. Um, not as successful as we probably should have been over that time. We made a final and got pumped in Pretoria by the Bulls and good trip afterwards. But um, I. Had great memories everywhere. Hollanders was good. Um, again, good trips around. Mm. <laughs> um, but yeah, again, to, to come back after being overseas to the Crusaders and just see how they operate, it's pretty impressive to be able to, I don't know, you walk into an organisation, sort of go, oh, okay, I, can, I get it now. Like, yeah, what is that? What is the, uh, what is, it? did Razor, was he the reason that the link back here to the Mount, did he drag you down? Was there an opportunity? Oh, yeah. He gave me a ring and I thought he was having a laugh because I was just like, bro, I'm like, <laughs> But he's, I'm a million years old, man. He um he definitely got the dragnet out and picked up a couple of old carcasses. I know that Jared Hoyata joined you down there yeah. as well, and that sounded like a whole lot of fun. You two living together like a couple of eighteen year old school kids. Back into babysitting, it was good. <laughs> <laughs> what is it? What is it that, that, that they do down there that makes them so special? Um, <clears throat> oh, it's just just got a great culture down there. Eh? That's just years and years and ingrained yeah. standards and good people, and you know they really. It's, it's, a, it's a whole organisation thing, it's not just a team and it's a whole, everyone plays a role and Razor's great and, and getting that sort of, you know, that camaraderie and that connection amongst everyone and, the, you know, towards a greater good and it helps when you've got 50 All Blacks in the team, you know, you don't have to worry about whether or not um, anyone's going to turn up today. Um, so obviously they, you know, but they've, they've built that and it's just, um, oh, it's, you know, I learned a lot there um, just in a year that I was there. You know, I thoroughly enjoyed it, but, you know, you can definitely see why they're so successful. And the Chiefs, you know, fond memories there. They're not having it. I mean, they're, they're there or thereabouts, aren't they? That's the toughest part for them. It's on paper. It looks like they're getting absolutely pumped, but they just can't seem to seal a win. Yeah, the, I think they just had a lot of injuries. Um, probably let them down, and, yeah, it's a tough one. But, but yeah, they're, they're there or thereabouts. It's just a few bits and pieces, and... With this game, it's too brutal that any mistakes and you get punished. Because you're, um, you know, you played for the Chiefs um, a number of years ago, and now you have a little bit to do with them. Being involved with the Bay of Blenny team, you probably um, get a little bit of insight to the Chiefs set up these days. Any major differences? Because while yeah, the Chiefs haven't started um, Super Rugby so well after COVID, but in the last few years they've been a year in year out really strong team. They've won a comp a few times. Is are they getting that, that culture thing right, which everyone talks about, but like, you know, um, it seems like they are tracking 100% in the right direction from the early days where they had good players. Like everyone said, what a strong looking team, but they just couldn't turn it into to more wins. Yeah, like they've showed, I think, when Rennie came and sort of turned that around a bit and had a few good wins and I suppose, um, you know, they, they had a pretty strong side and had the right guys that sort of had, had grown up a bit and then started leading the team and, you know, Lats was there for a while and Liam and then Sonny went there and, um, you know, the Kahui's and that and that all put together with the younger guys like Cruden that arrived and, they yep. you know, they seemed to play really well under those under that group and then um, I think, yeah, getting back to their roots a little bit around what being a chief was and, and all that stuff and um, I suppose just a different spin on it with, with Gats being there this year but hopefully they can... Get back on board. Back on board. Yeah, Crud's still doing it. How's the carcass still holding up? Yeah, I know. I've no idea. How old is he? Uh, 34, is I'm he? thinking. 
Uh, is he that old? I don't know, but I, there's certainly there's a few outliers in the game like him, like Damian McKenzie, Richie Mwanga a little bit. They, the game's getting bigger, but they're little guys who's still manning, managing to more well and truly hold themselves, which is pretty impressive, actually, to be honest. Yeah. Yeah, guys like Richie, like he, he just loves throwing tin, eh? Like He doesn't <laughs> look at that. He is strong. Is like he? He's strong. Like he's got to impress his quads, actually. I'll give him that. He does. Like he's he got gives, beautiful quads. He on. does. They're lovely, aren't they? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Mate, and... um. But you um you had a little taste of the Crusaders, you know Chiefs Highlanders. But you've also you got you got to be one of the um what is it what was I reading in uh, one of the articles about you? More clubs than Arnold Palmer. Like when you look at the CV from around the world, like yeah, just give them the rattle off for us. Where where have you been? Oh, Ugh. go super yeah. first and then roll oh. off overseas. Chiefs Highlanders Crusaders went to Panasonic Wild Knights in Japan, Clermont Ferrand at ASM in France. To Newcastle, and those are my, my clubs. That must be tough going for. I mean, obviously, um, Claremont they uh, they love their code, and you guys came close a couple of times. Yeah, I've lost a lot of finals actually. <laughs> <laughs> so see a pattern. Yeah. Yeah. And yeah, I've actually the added them. It's it's terrible. I've, like I was in the stand for the Crusaders when I can sort of whip that in with the old back back. Oh yeah, 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 yeah title. <laughs> but um, yeah, like that was next level over there. It's it's everything. Um, so it was fairly stressful at times, you know, those big Heineken Cup finals, top 14. Um, when I was there, uh, they'd had 77 successful games at home. And then they, we, like, it was a bit of a relief to lose, but it's just crazy, eh? Um, they fill it out every week. It's just different, next level overseas. And the pressures are, it's not, oh, we'll be back next year, it's relegation. It's massive, you know, you're paying, playing for survival all the time. Because that's something we want to touch on with you is like we we always hear about France. You know, it's a place that um, is prepared to pay some Kiwis big money to get them over there, and it's um, you know we have lost a few big names um, to that competition. But we don't we don't see it much. We don't touch it. We don't feel it. We see the French French side out here every now and again. But like like you say, why why is that competition so wealthy? Like why is it so well followed? You know, is it literally every Saturday? You know, from 12 o'clock on match day, the town's buzzing and it goes into a full crowd and they're all nuts for it. Like, what's um, what's the go with this comp over yeah. there? Yeah, <coughs> I don't they just got, it's got massive buy-in and it's just everyone's so proud of their province and they wear all the gears and they come in and they, there's, like, <laughs> bands running through the streets and, yep. you know, like, everyone's enjoying themselves. And um, oh, it's, all, it's, it's such a theatrical sort of atmosphere you know the coaches on the sideline yelling out orders and it's just hands in the air and it's so passionate <laughs> Delaney but it's what are you doing, yeah, what are you doing? <laughs> <laughs> still don't understand Defense. French <laughs> did you how much did you get into the culture because obviously you've um you spent a bit of time in Japan did you pick up the language there what's your French oh. like and then you wouldn't have understood a word that was being said in Newcastle yeah, t- so Tony Brown was coach of Panasonic when I was there and I started off with a hiss and a roar you know going to all the classes and he's like Mate, I've been here for eight years. I still don't know. <laughs> and he's like, just give up now, mate. <laughs> so that didn't really. And I had a really good so the half uh, Japanese half Kiwi guy there was fluent in both. And I was just like, it's easier with you, mate. Yeah. I just like we had a translator in that, and I'd talk for about five minutes or anything, and he'd take say it about three seconds. I'll go oh, I'll d- in one ear out the other. We won't worry about that ever again. But is it for Totsu Namabiru? Yeah, yeah. But at um. At Claremont, like, talk just a little bit about the style, like, because sometimes, you know, the French are associated with a bit of flair, you know, perception is that they throw the ball around a lot, but then I've talked to fellas like yourself and other lads that, like, before the game, they're almost in a five-by-five five mm. square, blimmin, giving each other black eyes, and, and, and they're, like, they love the contact as well. Like, what's the footy like over there from a, a guy from the Bay of Plenty who likes to chuck the ball yeah. around going over to <coughs> the, the yeah, big it was, show? it was real tough, like, um, and I struggled over there at times just with... All of that, because the thing is, your season's so long. You start in summer, you go through winter, <laughs> then you finish in summer again. Like it's, I used to walk into the physio room, and you look at the year planner, eh, and you're like, oh, we're like there, and I've got to get to here, <laughs> and it's like, it's a lot of weeks. And you're playing every one oh, of those buddy. No, they get our money not, out no, of they, send, they send Dad's army away <laughs> on their way trip. So it's, <laughs> it's it's not it's uh, not easy to get the body through. Obviously, people go there for the paycheck, and you went there for. A, Bit of lifestyle, some good cash. Now you're a big property mogul back here in the bay. And it funded that quite nicely for you. But how does the body hold up through something like that? It's not. It's not easy footy. Yeah, it's it's tough. It is tough. Uh, we had Vin Cotter was the coach there. Um, 
but you've got different cultures so the Georgian boys are mental and they yeah. just want to they need to bash something during the week and the French <laughs> are the same so it's like we'd have pretty much two games a week um, you know a big contact session on Tuesday try and recover and then get back on even captain's runs were competitive competitive and contact and so it's just different like it's just a different game completely like I'd never driven a line out from inside my half and then get a penalty and the crowd's thinking it's the best thing ever. I'm like, just throw the ball, get it out of there. Because <laughs> there is that, eh? They, they love to scrum, get scrum penalties. They love to, um, you know, goal kicking is even more revered in France and la drop goal mm. and these sorts of things that it is. We're seeing a few more of them in New Zealand, but they play for those things, yeah. don't they, in those comps? Yeah, it's, it was just hard to get my head around. I'd, so team, Morgan Parra was half back, Wizzy Fafana, and then there's like Rougerie like and these yeah. like dudes that are, Played all these tests for France and like legends and that. So, and then we had like Sivi Vatu and yep. Lee Byrne. Like we had a good crew, Benson Stanley, like ending people. It was, <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, and then Regan King. So, that, that my, <laughs> I'm, that they, I'm blaming them for my lack of French, really. <laughs> Um, what was it? Was it a pretty uh, cultural melting pot? Did the, the Frenchies love you? Oh, they accept you in? Or yeah, was they, it pretty, pretty clicky? You in France, you must speak French. And we're like, but I've been here for like a week. <laughs> <laughs> Look at the war planet. Yeah, but um, no, nah, it's good. Like, love France, like the food, culture. Um, they, yeah, they, they can, the thing is, they can sort of sit around and enjoy a red, but the foreigners, not yeah, so much. Yeah, we yeah, can yeah, end up yeah. having to have. Eight bottles each. Yeah, Wamsey, <laughs> yeah. Wamsey said that was a thing that he struggled with over there as well. That everyone would sit down, and have a glass, and he'd just knock into <laughs> three or four bottles and just get absolutely <laughs> weaselled. Yeah, the, the Frenchies are like, well, it's a mental. He's like, got no class, no class at all. And mate, then off to Newcastle and like, why we're sitting here? We're sitting here in the Bay of Plenty, the beach close by. Never really gets below ten degrees at worst. And you decided to sign a contract oh, yeah. in a place that has about ninety minutes sunshine. In the middle per of the winter yeah. per day, it's just um, for sh- the sun is like it's for, for show completely. <laughs> yeah. There's nothing in it, but yeah, that was after being in Japan and then being in France. I was thinking it'd be real nice to speak English for a bit yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> within which the same environment, which even that's hard to do. But I had an opportunity to stay in France, and it was just why not go to England and see what that's like. Um, keen to sort of play in the Premiership and yeah. and do that. Um, but yeah, no, it was good. I had a three-year deal there um, and then got a call from Bay of Plenty in my third year to come back and I was umming and ahhing. But always wanted to finish here and in front of family and all that kind of stuff was pretty big to, to finish playing in the Bay Colours and, and, and got no regrets. It was awesome to be able to come back and play. You also got a taste of, yeah, up on the wall there. Uh, got a taste of the black jersey. How good? <laughs> yeah, that was... Um, Pretty unexpected at the time. Um, yeah, I sort of look back, I'm sort of like, oh, you know, I, don't, I was mate. involved for a, a period of time, but um, no, I loved, loved it. Probably one of the most stressful times of my life coming in there and yep. away you go, boy. Um, especially picked, with, picked a good DC time to be in there as well. Like DC re- really made a pig of himself for the best part of a decade. So <laughs> yeah, it's like, quite, pretty discouraging if you're in that mixer trying to come through. Yeah. So it was, I was, I was fairly, I don't know, I was probably one of the older guys to probably debut. As what, were you, what were you when you got the, got the um, call up? 28, 27, 28, I think. Yep. Um, and that's probably where I think I was playing my you know, best rugby at that age, but, you know, better understanding of the game and all that stuff. Um, but, yeah, real eye-opener for me. Loved it. Um, you notice the jump? The level yeah, up, yeah. It's just you just got to be, you just got to take control of things yourself and make sure you you know your stuff. And um, it probably made me realise how hard boys train. Like you know, McCaw had had a eighty minute test against someone, and then he's smashing himself in the gym Monday morning. <coughs> you know, like just just beasts. Yeah, just but, no, it was good. It was um, yeah, it was good to tour and do all that stuff. It was awesome. Um, you know, to to go and play overseas and, and be a part of that. It was, um, you know, after having a taste of, you know, All Black Rugby, International Rugby, the decision to go overseas is a tough one because it's one that it's, it's a big talking point in New Zealand. Some of the talent that we, we lose off seas, uh, we lose overseas and, and always big arguments and discussions around eligibility. But like for you, uh, was it a no-brainer or actually, you know, what, was, what were the things you had um, to weigh up making that big call? Yes, yeah, so I made 
All Blacks in 2009, <clears throat> and then went and joined the Chiefs again in 2010. And then halfway through that season, Fozzie wanted to bring line speed against the Stormers, and I tried to bring line speed and <laughs> broke my shoulder. <laughs> um, Good line so speed. Yeah, it must had, have been a hell of a line speed. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, but yeah, so had a shoulder operation out for six months or whatever it may be. I suppose in that time you sort of like, sort of, you think it wouldn't really happen to you kind of thing. And you know, moving forward, what does it look like? Um, so because of that, probably made me go overseas. If, if that hadn't happened, and I'd pushed for um, All Black selection post that tour, then things might have been different. But um, there was an opportunity to go to Japan, and um, and I took it. So young family then, or kids? No, not no, yet. just uh, um, just cruising. Yeah. So um, the club in Japan's it's like in the sticks, in Japan sense but it is actually in the sticks. So it is, it is a tough lifestyle. It's not just go over there and yeah. happy days and take a paycheck yeah, and live yeah, it up yeah, and, yeah, yeah, and then off you go. But um, no, it was, it was, it was good times. It was good footy in that. The school, school level was really high and you still got that hit of playing good rugby. Um, a part of me felt that I'd, you sort of retire because right. no one is really that cares about there, it. Eh? But, so you're playing for different things. It's it's just a bit weird because you're normally playing for your province, your family, your whatever it may be. But you're sort of playing in front of a handful of people at times, <laughs> thinking like this is really weird. Yeah. Or yeah. extra why? <laughs> why? Yeah, why? Why? It's different now, you know. It's they get real buying through the World yeah, Cup yeah. and yep. teams are you know the rules are a bit looser. When I was there, you, you could only play a couple of foreigners. That's right. Um, it wasn't the go to Super Rugby, come here and go back. It was so when I came back from the Highlanders to play in between seasons, it was sort of the first that anyone had really done that. So it was a real yeah. hard contracting model. Which you were the original bad. sabbatical where yeah, you yeah. know, you and Richie and, and a few others. Yeah, so it, was, it, was, it was good to get that because the pre seasons were about nine months. Yeah, I've heard that. <laughs> Brutal. Right. Yeah. But mate, it was, it was always in the back of your mind you wanted to get home and play a season or two um, before you. F- before you hung up the boots, like that was always the plan? Yeah, yeah. Ideally, um, and I never thought it would happen because of the time frames and yep. I was old. Um, <clears throat> but Clayton, being Clayton, can, can influence pretty well. Um, so had a good think about it and, and thought it would, you know, it'd probably make me happy coming back and um, money isn't everything always. And um, yeah, I'm really glad, glad I came back. It was awesome. Like I loved playing for the Bay and it was, you know, those, you know, we unfortunately missed out on that final next of time in Wellington a couple of years ago and then to win it last year was good. So, um, no, real, really happy and, and there's the opportunity of potentially transitioning into the coaching side of things as well, which, um, you know, helped me as well in terms of what does is, what is life after rugby look like. How do you make that call? We, and, and at what stage do you go, well, this is going to be me. I'm going to head into the coaching frame. Um... I'm you haven't got any other skills? No, no I'm stuffed, eh? If, <laughs> if anyone's out there. Um, <laughs> nah, it's, I've had quite a few good coaches and along the way I've always been sort of interested in how it all comes together and detail and, and that kind of stuff around, I don't know, I've had Fozzie and Time of the All Blacks and Tony Brown and yep. um, all those guys and in France with Vern and Clayton and all that. So I've had really good coaches to try and learn and you sort of take bits and pieces from everyone and sort of... I don't know, it's, it helps yeah. you, that's definitely moulded who I, how I coach um, now, which isn't very well, but um, <laughs> <laughs> Rome wasn't built in a day. <laughs> the oh, other mate. Defense <laughs> um, no, it's, but yeah, it's, uh, it won't define me to be a coach, it's not yeah, yeah. You know, everything, but um, it's you just, just You miss the, uh, uh, the kiwi fruit junket that half yeah, the guys are on uh, around here in the Bay But plenty. it's nice to get that wee fix of, um, you know, you retire and you're still getting that sort of camaraderie and... and being around the boys and, and all that, which is, I think, when you leave is probably the one thing that you really miss is yep. coming to work and seeing your mates and, and doing all that thing. <laughs> Who are the players that you were looking up to that you sort of played alongside? Um, I don't know, when I first came to the Bay, it was, um, there's guys like Wayne Ormond, yep. um, even Adrian Cashmore was here. Um, just those guys like, I don't, you know, like Aleki Latui and there's all these, you know, big units floating around and... So those guys were, you know, Kevin Senio was here and we just had a real good group that year that really helped me out. But um, 
Yeah, we had a pretty good team at the, cl- at the mountain here. It was pretty much a <laughs> steamer's side. <laughs> but um, I don't know, growing up with those guys and, and then I suppose like guys like, you know, Cashy was, yeah. was pretty cool to play with him. You know, I've watched him play with, you know, those Blues games when they were pretty Humming, good. Yeah, yeah so it was, it was pretty cool. And mate, who's um, sort of gets the hard man tag over the years, or, or verging on grub? You know, <laughs> Nilly Latus. <laughs> he he, um, he hit harder because he was a um, he went to Sacred Heart in Auckland. He's a Sacred yeah. Heart um, product. He made the water polo team, I think, having never swimmed before, and start, <laughs> in seventh form started swimming and made the water polo team. And you look at him, and he's he's not a water polo player. Nah, like he's it's strange with all that water, eh? Yeah. All that water around those islands. <laughs> <laughs> but he still he is just a, a solid rock of a of a human yeah. and and hurt. The Tom and Seven. Gets him. Oh, I've heard Glenn Jackson say after they uh, won the won the shield that uh, yeah he was a pest. He had to be kicked out of yeah. his place early doors. Let's just put it that way. But um, yeah, Paul Tupai is up there. Yeah, Remember yeah. Him playing for the Bay. It's he a, just finished playing for like at fifty or something for someone in England, but. Mate, he played. He did. He played for Northampton and then the Bedford Blues. Yeah, well into his forties, yeah. and he's like a goddamn celebrity. Yeah, I think, I think around that sun kind of stuff. You know? <laughs> <laughs> so those own clubs, mate. Yeah. But we'll we'll wrap up in a minute. But just let us know. So what's on the horizon? Who's um, who's the bay got? That's what you're preparing for at the moment. I know the lads are coming in and doing the mahi in between the work hours, and obviously then you're you're doing the scouting, mate. You're working hard on the computer mullies and, and keeping Donk happy. But who have you guys got? You got a preseason game as well, or you got a couple of preseasons just sort of tidying that up at the moment. Um, yeah, but yes, probably just really ramp things up when the boys get from Super Rugby. Quite a few. I think the Chiefs have got a buy that last week, so it'd be good if yeah get those guys in. But um, yeah, there's not much time once once everyone gets back from Super Rugby, and I think now with our forward pack, there might be about 15 guys that are <laughs> out amongst the team, so it's hard to try and get any um yeah real real content to them. But you know they're, they're clever boys and they get it pretty quickly, and hopefully can. You know, got Taranaki first up. Oh, yep. Down Whereabouts? There, Englewood, I think. Oh, Englewood. <coughs> little like the grassroots footy ground. I like it. So, um, no, the boys are real excited. Um, things are going pretty good. So, it'd be nice to, to start a little bit later in the year, too. Hope to get a bit of yeah. razzle out there with yep. some dry weather. Yep. Absolutely. Here's the, here's the grub. There. <laughs> <laughs> Speaking of grubs, Joe, how are you? <laughs> Just walked into the studio. <laughs> he, is a, he is a special piece of kit. <laughs> Mate, he's next. <laughs> Mate, thank you so much. I appreciate this. I know um, I know uh, you probably snuck out of the office when Donk's not looking just to give us a bit of your time, but uh, good luck for um, the Modern Team Cup coming up. You're, as we said, you're up in the big dance now with the big boys, so hopefully you can take all that good form from last year and turn it into a, a good season this year. So good luck, mate. Appreciate 